Welcome back guys. Today we are going to tackle the last pieces or bits of this setup here. The incoming power and outgoing power from my solar electric system. And we will make sure that we can monitor the electricity going. Doesn't matter if it goes out or in or whatever direction it takes. In an earlier video you saw me do this with a Raspberry Pi and one single STM630 meter. Today we are going to use an ESP8266 instead and we are going to use, as you can see back here, one, two, three and even four meters hooked together on the same bus connected to this one, sending data over MQTT or if you want directly to Influx or whatever the recipient is. So if we take a look at the bench here here we can see the old USB to RS485 that I was using. This one worked great and this one was for the Raspberry Pi. We will now be scrapping this one. So instead I bought this TTL2485 board instead. And this one is really really good. This works really great. Uh, I have been using it before. It's simple. And towards the ESP8266 you don't need anything extra just to hook it in and plug it into the STM630 or 120 and it will work out of the box. I will of course be using my ESP8266 and today I'm using this version, the Lowlin version and that's just because I have many of them. And as you can see here I have a 3D printed case that I will be using. Down below you can find links to everything. Note that depending on the ESP that you choose you, know, you need to choose a box that fits it. To power the ESP8266 I got this DIN mounted power supply. This one will output 5 volt up to 2.4 amp. So that should be more than enough. Uh, it's a little bit heavy but it will work for my application. I start with soldering the wires to the actual converter board, the TTL to 485 board. I'm using a very very thin silicon wire that I found on eBay. You can find the links down below and I do highly recommend those if you want to do any work. I'm soldering it directly to the ESP8266 of course. Uh, no breadboard here. The TX from the the TTL board goes to TX on the ESP and the RX to the RX. It might say, sound strange, but that's how it is for this board. Beware of when you do it like this way, you cannot actually um, program the board while you have the TTL board hooked up at the same time. I do drill a hole to actually fit the cable through. I'm using normal four stranded wire in case of actually telephone wire I think. Uh, it's a very very short distance that we're going to run this so it's perfectly fine. Expanding the leads for the power actually to the ESP so I can mount those wire and I'm using silicon wire there as well. And I'm using hot glue to actually hold the TTL board in place. It's really nice because it fits underneath the USB. And here you have it all together. Preparing by drilling a couple of holes through the both containers. Uh, so I actually can have the wire going between those two. And first of all it's the power for the actual a DC to DC converter for the ESP but I'm also later on getting the wire for the Modbus through as well uh, when you are attaching a DC to DC converter like this always fuse it of course as you can see here I will be hooking it up to one of the fuses now you may ask why don't you hook it up to the power in the right container and that's because the right container is not for such outlets. The left one is actually for it, so that's the re reason. Hire an electrician to do this work if you are unsure. First test, as you can see, the DC, DC converter starts and powers on. And when disabling the fuse again, it takes a couple of seconds and then it shuts off. <coughs> I'm now hooking back up the Modbus wires. The Modbus itself is 
on a tight loop so you actually hook the meters up in string after the charger. I'm not going through in this video how you actually configure the Modbus uh, electricity meters, but it's very very simple. They have one uh, unit per each and the speed is 9600. Here you can see the software on the ESP. We're actually on the first run configured MQTT, the Wi-Fi and everything. So that's really really neat to have. So if I need to change anything, I just press one of the buttons on the ESP and it will reboot and go into this menu again. Now it's time to hook everything together, so I'm starting to add the covers. You can see the ESP in the down corner in the right blinking away. And I'm marking the fuses with some text on them. Uh, I could have used a label marker as well, but I had this pen lying around, so I started with that one. It takes a little bit of fiddling to get the cover on the right place, but when it's done, it's really neat to have. Unfortunately, I have something in the middle of the way of the camera, but yeah, I didn't see that f until after. Writing as well. And this is just the preparation before I actually add uh, labeled text install from the machine. The ESP will be hot glued to the wall on the side, so I easily can see the blink. And the last the door for the big cabinet as well. So let us quickly take a look at the drawing. So this is basically how I have hooked up everything. From the left top you have the PSU, the Dean mounted PSU that I'm using right now. It produces 5 volt and is connected to the ESP8266 via the VIN port. The actual TTL to 485 converter is connected on the 3 volt rail and is connected via the TXD and RXD pins directly to the TXD and RXD on the ESP8266. The converter then is hooked up to the actual SDM 630 meters in my case and as you can see they are connected on series. So you basically go to the first one and then you parallel each of each one of them together. In the end, as you can see, I have a 120 ohm resistor and this is needed for it all to work. If you have a longer distance than I have, that's not a big deal. You can have up to 100 meters or something around that and that should work just fine. In Node-RED, I have this queue or this flow as you can see above. The flow itself is rather simple where it takes all that comes in from the meter itself and then parses it and then sends it to the queue before it actually goes to influx DB. The queue is there to actually handle when we have issues with influx or when you get a lot of data. If you process like I do four meters at the same time with bunch of data, the influx won't be able to handle it unless you have installed a queue in front of it. So that's why I'm adding in the actual in node red. It's now all hooked together. The unit here, the ESP8266, is mounted on the side and the outside. Um, I did that so I easily can see the LED blinking. It should be blinking every second, roughly, and should be blinking five times. That means it checks four of the meters successfully, and the fifth is that the device itself is powered successfully. It monitors all the four meters here, and it works perfectly. If you want to have the schematics of this hooked up together, you can find links down below to my webpage where I have collected some of the information on how to do this. If you want to see more of all the stuff that is ongoing here about the solar system, please check out my other videos as well. The code for the ESP8266 is something that I found on the internet and you can find the original links in my webpage that you can find links to down below. I have forked that code and changed it somewhat to actually fit my needs. Um, and that's because I do run four units and I thought it, it didn't work as I wanted from the beginning. 
I do send all the data to MQTT, that is later on parsed to InfluxDB. Um, you can find the flows in the node RAID as well for that if you want to. Um, I will include some of the base code in my next version of the Solar Sys or the Raspberry Pi Solar System. I'm feeding this to a PowerFlow or DIY PowerFlow webpage. Um, the original credits go to Fernando, of course. Uh, I have forked that one to suit my needs as well. Um, but if you do like that code or that design, feel free to credit the originator, Fernando, in this case. So guys, if you like what you have seen so far, don't forget to press the subscribe button down below, the bell of course. I hope to see you guys in the next video. And for now, bye and I'll see you.